We're going to be presenting today a differentiated product that probably you've never seen. We're really excited about this as well. So Super is bringing to market an all-in-one blockchain. Another way to say that is full vertical integration. So we have a different point of view than some of the folks on stage had. My name is Joshua. I'm a co-founder and CEO at Supra. We've been building this for almost four years. So what is the problem? Most decentralized applications today need to run through multiple networks. So for example, if you need Oracle price sheets, that's a different network. If you want automation, that's a different network. On-chain randomness, cross-chain communication. So your application actually relies on various different disparate networks and therefore actually has the security of the weakest component. And this actually also contributes to latency and more cost. Now, this problem actually gets worse in the modular stack. You have layer twos, layer threes that have to communicate with the data availability layer, settlement layer. Also, in addition to that, the other services, Oracle services, crossing communication services, on-chain random services, multiple disparate networks. It gets more complex. Developers have a worse developer experience because they have to know the frameworks of these different uh, protocols. So higher cost for builders, broken security guarantees, more latency. And for the developer, right? Different frameworks, different languages, multiple gas tokens. Now what Super is doing is building a fully vertically integrated layer one. So what is that? Full vertical integration effectively means one network that does it all. So what we're talking about here, we're bringing something that the market has not seen yet. We are going to be multi VM compatible. So we're going to mark with move language. We're big fans of move. We're also going to be supporting the EVM. Over time, maybe six months from now, we support uh, Solana VM and Cosmosm as well. We have automation. Many of you folks may not know that blockchains don't have a decentralized if this or that service. That is usually an external service that has to trigger these transactions. We talk about a world computer, but it can't have automated transactions. Crossing communication, right? Similarly, we talk about world computers, yet these blockchains don't communicate with each other. Right. Oracle price feeds that includes cryptocurrency, FX, commodities, and on-chain randomness. On-chain randomness is a very interesting topic from a cryptography point of view, and it powers many abuse cases in blockchain. We have a single stack that can do all these services in one. So how do we maintain security? Our nodes are shuffled from clan to clan. So our network is composed of a network we call the tribe. The whole thing is called a tribe, and those are shuffled into subcommittees called clans. This shuffling is very important. The analogy I like to give is that if you have a body of water and those nodes are not changing, or rather the water is not flowing, then it will become like a swamp. But if the water is flowing, then you have a vibrant ecosystem. So it's important for us to periodically shuffle the nodes around that are doing different services. Now, once we have shuffled those nodes into what we call clans or subcommittees of the tribe, those clans can also be reassigned to do different compute services. So this unpredictability is our security. This is how we have shared security and provide multiple services in one single stack. Now, Supra is a high throughput, low latency chain. We have innovated our own consensus protocol called Moonshot. Moonshot has been uh, formally verified by the Microsoft Ivy Checker. Now. We look at these numbers. How could you hit so much TPS, right? So how it works on Supra, just to be clear, is every single node can actually be a batch producer. So they can produce a batch of transactions, maybe 5,000 transactions per batch, and they submit it only initially to their clan. Okay, what's really interesting is that we can have strong data availability guarantees when you disseminate the data to the clan and you have 51% of the nodes in the clan signing off on it, creating a data availability quorum certificate. This guarantees with high probability that at least one single no honest node is present. And if we, in this example, we ran this test across 300 nodes globally distributed, this can be replicated. And we hit 500,000 transactions uh, per second throughput, right? And with Moonshot consensus, what we include in our blocks are just the hash of the batch, as well as the data availability proof. So our blocks are small. Now, consensus has to run on the entire tribe, the entire network. And in our tests, this was truly decentralized distributed test. We hit 500,000 transactions per second throughput, 
with sub-second consensus finality. Now, there are other chains that can hit extreme throughput as well, but you'll see that they're doing it on 100 nodes. The moment you go to 150 nodes, especially for DAGs, direct acyclic graphs, the performance starts to degrade. So we have a protocol and a strategy that actually allows us to have more decentralization and high performance. Now, Super will be able to handle and support more nodes of 300. That's another story. We were basically, what we're doing is we're going to enshrine uh, the RPC nodes into our token economics. We're working on that right now. RPC nodes are full nodes. And uh, we'll have to talk about that another time though. So multi-VM support. Each of the different clans can be running a different virtual machine. Okay. So data is disseminated through each and every single node to the respective clan. The clan now has the data and we segregate the data dissemination to the clan based off of the virtual machine. So the different clans can be executing. Now what's really uh, spectacular about this is the clan itself, remember, is a subcommittee of the entire network. Okay. And we only need 51% of the nodes in the subcommittee to reach agreement to execute. This is only possible if the entire network of the tribe has a total ordering for consensus. So yes, consensus has to run on the entire network, but the subcommittee that's doing execution, but that could be executing the virtual machine, that could be Oracle services, that could be VRF, verifiable random function. These can be done actually on the subcommittee level at 51%. So this is another insight, major insight, that allows us to be very low latency and have a lot of com compute capability. Some of you guys might be wondering, how does that make sense? I'll just try to break it down simply for you. If the entire network was running the moonshot, which is what we think is the, the maximum you can take a classical consensus algorithm, that does have to, you can only tolerate up to 33% Byzantine nodes, right? But the subcommittee can tolerate 51% or 50% Byzantine nodes. So as long as the subcommittee is large enough, the probability that more than 50% of the nodes in the clan our Byzantine, it's very low. This is a major insight that allows us to have this capability. Once again, the entire network is composed of clans that's called a tribe, and we have multiple clans within a tribe. One clan can be running our Oracle protocol. Our Oracle protocol is finalizing data on 600 to, millise 600 to 900 milliseconds. We believe this is also approaching the limit in type in terms of Oracle protocol data finality. Another clan can be running our decentralized verifiable random function. Another one can be running the move virtual machine, the EVM, Solana VM, Cosmwasm. We're really trying to build something that has not been done before that can bring together communities and application developers from many ecosystems. Once again, Moonda has to run out the tribe and Hypernova is our cross-chain communication protocol that also has to run on the tribe. What that allows us to do is we, and just to give you the summary, what we do is we just recompute the consensus of the other chains. When we have awareness in the proof of stake world, we have awareness who the validators are. As long as we have that information, we can just recompute that consensus. That verification is not difficult. It's not too cumbersome. So when you go from one layer one through Supra to another chain, remember Supra is a low latent. That's actually layer one to layer one and is cryptographically secure. So it's actually a pretty simple concept once you see it, but it's very powerful. We're going to introduce something that is brand new. Now, we have been talking about these layer twos and the growth of these layer twos and app chains. And the major problem with that is, as we all know, broken composability and thus broken and fractured liquidity. Super containers give you the app chain experience on the layer one itself. So app chains give builders the freedom at the cost of broken composability and fractured liquidity. With containers, we can actually, we realize that containers on our layer one are actually composable with each other. So you can have an app chain like experience where you have your own gas token, your own governance, but because they're on a shared infrastructure, they can actually compose with each other. Therefore we have shared liquidity. This is a big deal. And this is actually brand new. We just announced this yesterday. If you're a developer, you deploy your container. How does this work? It's like a logical partition of the block space. More or less, when you deploy, you can set access policies. This container can interact with these containers, or you can choose which ones they don't interact with. So maybe one container is regulated DeFi. And you know that liquidity cannot touch the open DeFi container. 
So you can, in your access policy here, uh, you can actually um, make sure that they do not compose with each other. Now in your container, you can set your own governance, any form of decentralized governance you can set. You can create your own custom gas token and set your own gas free. So you get the benefit of an app chain. A lot of developers like to build an ecosystem and you can price the interactions or the transactions. Yes, you do have to pay Supra's micro fee, but for example, I like to give this as an example of a gaming container. Suppose a transfer of NFT on Supra is maybe half a penny, but in your game, you price it to be 25 cents. That's actually a 50X markup, not a 50%, 50X markup. And that is revenue, a new revenue stream for your app. So we do believe that the application layer will capture a lot of the, the value. Once again, these containers are, can be self-enclosed or they can compose with each other. Therefore, we have shared liquidity. And because you don't have to bootstrap your own operator set, node operator set, you don't have to bootstrap your own economic security because you're relying on Supra's existing validator network, you can go to market much faster. So do we have composability? Yes, app chains don't. We have shared liquidity, app chains don't, layer twos don't. Sure, they're in the op optimum optimism stack, they're working towards that, but that will be a challenge. And I'm not convinced that will be a composable uh, solution. It may have to be what is termed a two-phase commit. Uh, network setup, you can just, you can go to market really quickly when we roll this out. We're actually working on a drag and drop container builder. So creatives, uh, artists, uh, entrepreneurs can deploy their own ecosystem very easily. And of course, if you're a developer, you can customize it even deeper. If you're trying to roll your own app chain, you have to worry about the economics to incentivize validators, right? And there have been many instances where it just wasn't worth it for validators anymore. So the app chain didn't work out. Once again, we also offer native services, native price feeds, every block, zero block delay execution for automation, on-chain randomness, and then cross-chain communication. Some of these are ready to go. Some of them are coming soon. But uh, if you're bootstrapping your own layer two, you have to integrate with the Oracle service. You're bootstrapping an app chain, you have to integrate with a bridging service and it gets complex and expensive. The benefits of Supra containers is you have your own custom gas token, you have your own governance model, you have cross container composability, you have shared liquidity. This concept, it's only really possible on a uh, single layer one. You had to scale the layer one first in order to make this work, which we've done. We have shared security of Supra's layer one itself. We have extreme throughput and you have access to our price feeds, on-chain randomness, automation, crushing communication services. So we believe that Supra containers are strictly better than rolling your own app chain or layer two. So introducing Supra dApps. Supra dApps are applications that leverage more than one of our services. So maybe you use our price feed and automation service, or maybe you use our crushing communication protocol with the, the uh, crushing can call with randomness. There's all kinds of different tools and functionality that you can mix and match and do. So we call those super dApps. So what's, what's makes them super? Low latency performance, robust shared security, simplified developer experience. Remember, the problem was you had to interact with many different networks and thus use different tokens, different frameworks. But on super, it's just one framework to get all of these services. It's cheaper for builders because you don't have to juggle all these different tokens and it's cheaper for the user because of the same reasons. So any DAP from any virtual machine, right now we're going to market with Move Language, but also EVM's coming soon, and then Solana VM and Cosmwasm. Any of these virtual machine DAPs uh, can actually leverage any, our native services and become a super DAP. Let's take a, an example. This is a very interesting example. Now, perp DEXs, when you have a liquidation, it's usually triggered by an external party or a liquidation or automation service. That liquidation may come with a 1% fee. Now this causes a race to, to trigger the liquidation because it could be quite lucrative, right? And this also causes perverse incentives to collude with node operators and such. Now with Supra, we believe the following can happen. With automation, with our price sheet data, block by block and cross-chain communication, right? You can enable the following. If a liquidation price, if the price is met, and remember on a block to block basis, we have the Oracle data price sheets built in. With zero block delay automation, we can automatically deterministically execute that liquidation and return that fee to the DAP itself who can distribute to its users. And perhaps they can rev share with the node operators. 
we think that this is a really great model that can enable new business models and revenue streams. A couple of use cases, I'm conscious of the time here, ultra dynamic NFTs that leverage randomness, Oracle data to do different things. Universal DID solutions, we're really interested to see if we can solve cross-chain identity. Interchain data marketplaces in the era of AI, there may be data on different chains that we want to coordinate to enable access. Ultimately, Supra is positioning itself to be the world's first intra layer. Intra means within. So we want to be this middleware network that communicates and integrates with all the other major ecosystems. We are innovating a new market maker called a dynamic function market maker instead of a constant function. And that leverages our price feeds. There's more to this, but ultimately Supra wants to enable new do crushing DeFi use cases. We actually think, since Supra is so low latency, that we may be able to outpace centralized exchange for native asset settlement. If you're going from Ether to, let's say, to Aptos or to Sui, for example, native asset through Supra converted to a native asset on those destination chains, we actually think we may be able to outperform centralized exchanges. This is an instance where decentralized technologies can outperform centralized technologies. We're really excited to, to see what you developers dream up. We are providing the tools and the infrastructure, but you guys are bringing the creativity and the new ideas. And these things are only possible in Supra's layer one because we've vertically integrated these services. This has been a long-term project has taken us years to, to develop. We're going to market pretty soon. Don't ask me when TG, but it's soon. And yeah, we're very excited about the future of this industry. We think full vertical integration is a very natural evolution of technology. And we think it's not going to be any different to blockchain single network that can run all these services all at once. And just to point out this trend, Eigenlayer is actually through restaking, bringing vertical integration across Ethereum nodes. Guess what services Eigenlayer are bringing? They're mostly Oracle services or verifiable compute services. Sui is rolling out their own bridge. Aptos is rolling out their own on-chain randomness. So you're seeing this trend happen. Supra, however, has designed our system architecture to do this from the beginning. So this is what we're bringing to market. It's going to be a long journey. We're really excited about what this is going to do. And we've never seen this done by anyone else before. And we think that the Supra containers idea is going to give application developers what they're looking for when they're talking about on-chain governance, their own gas token, their own pricing model. It, with Supra's automation, we think that we are going to enable countless new revenue streams and it's truly business model innovation. So we're really excited about this and thank you for having us. Oh, you can, <laughs> one more thing. We did reserve, we've been very diligent not to touch the ecosystem fund. So we reserved over 10% of our tokens for a long-term ecosystem fund and we're putting together a super dApp showdown. This is a competition for application developers that can get a slice of the ecosystem fund. Super also already has over 500,000 KYC verified users through our gamified learn earn program. We actually KYC them, half a million people. And so we know these are verified users. This should be a world record for a layer one launch. Rollcoin had over a million, but they were a layer two. And also we have a partnership with Killer Whales. All right, that's it. Thank you, everyone.